video. We are close to the end of the semester, huh? This is chapter 15, the last of the three chapters uh, for test number four or the final. Now remember, a lot of the final will come out of chapters 13, 14, and 15, but part of the final will be out of chapters one through 12. And after I do this video, I'll do a video for you that's basically a finals review video. But this is, uh, this is chapter 15, so we're getting close to the end of personal financial planning. Boy, I hope you'll think about doing some of this. I hope you'll do, uh, I really, I'd like for you to become a personal financial planner. It definitely helps you to increase your, your wealth. And that's what you want to do. All right. Let me just start this thing. I know to go ahead and get started in chapter 15. It is what it is, so let's just go ahead and, and do it. Here's what I mean. You've decided because of being with esteemed Professor Joseph Lane that you are going to become a personal financial planner. And so in becoming a personal financial planner, you have accumulated wealth over a period of time. You, you have accumulated a, a significant amount of wealth. And you're in retirement now. And you're giving, living the good retirement. And it's all really going, going well. However, you're going to die. You hear me? You're, you're going to die. You can't hear me? You're going to die. You're going to die. I'm sorry. At some point in time, you're going to pass away. All right. Okay. Now that we got that over with, feel better. Now we got that over with. At some point, yeah, and you've heard this. I don't even like it. I mean, I mean, I've heard it so many times. When you die, you can't take it with you. And there's never been a, a hearse carrying a U-Haul behind it or pulling a U-Haul behind it. All kind of sad, I guess, type thoughts. But you can't take this wealth that you've accumulated. Hey, you've enjoyed your wealth. You've built your wealth. Your family's enjoyed your wealth. You've had a good life. But you're deceased. You can't take it with you. But, can you have a lot of say over what happens to your wealth? And the answer is yes. Now, there are certain laws in place, federal laws and state laws, that guides, to a certain extent, what happens to a person's wealth. Now let me, be, let me be silly here, okay? I know I'm being silly. You and your wife have been married for 50 years. And one day you're sitting there on the porch enjoying your retirement and you say, honey, would you go get me some ice cream? And honey says, you go get it yourself. And you say, well, doggone, that makes me mad. I'm going to do a new will, and I'm going to cut my wife out of all, or I'm going to cut my spouse, my husband, out of all their inheritance. New will, done. Can you do that? No, you can't. There are certain laws that are going to protect folks uh, in Louisiana, we're what's called a community co property state. We'll talk about that. But you can't, you can't cut a person out of what they're entitled to in a situation like that, because there's laws that prevent it. Now, the point I'm trying to make is this. There are certain laws that we have to live by as it relates to our, our estate. That's what it's called, is our estate once we're deceased. But there's a lot of things that we have the power to do with our estate and certainly a will is one of the big ways that we can do those things with our estate. So, uh, so uh, uh, this, this chapter is called uh, Preserving Your Estate. Not for you, but for those that you want to get your estate. And you know, you, you've already talked about you being deceased. So let's go ahead and get that off the, let's go ahead and get that off the board and make you back happy, happy at this point. All right, let me look at my, my handout here for a minute. Uh, you may notice at the very first of this handout for chapter 15, I had, I put on there, can you say attorney? At the very end of it, I say, can you say accountant? Now look, estate planning can become fairly complex. 
if you really have accumulated a significant estate and there are some 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 interesting things about your estate you may well want to get an attorney and or an accountant to help you put together your estate planning just keep that in mind you're not going to learn everything you will ever need to know about estate planning in the next four hours of this video no, okay next 20 minutes of this video we don't live forever we must safeguard the future of those we care about so the way you safeguard the future you know you did life insurance to safeguard the future if you had an untimely death remember that now through estate planning you're safeguarding the future of those you care about after you've passed away all right let's talk about what estate planning is and this is a be familiar with the process of developing a plan to administer and distribute your assets after death in a manner consistent with your wishes and the needs of your survivors while minimizing taxes. That's pretty easy. Some of these def <coughs> definitions, some of these definitions we get are kind of difficult definitions. Let me sit down here and oh, rest for a minute. This is a pretty easy definition. Very important definition, but not difficult. Estate planning, the process of developing a plan to do what? To administer and distribute your assets. How? After your death. How? In a manner consistent with your wishes and the needs of your survivors, and at the same time while minimizing taxes. Remember, as a, as a personal financial planner, we want to pay all the taxes we're legally obligated to pay, but not a penny more. We want to minimize our tax obligations. All right, who needs estate planning? Virtually everybody. You know, when we're talking about life insurance, I said, hey, Bill Gates doesn't need life insurance. The guy's worth 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 billion dollars. He owns life insurance companies. But does he need estate planning? Yeah, he does. He does. He needs to make sure that after his death, things, his estate is handled in the way you need to be. Now, I'm going to jump down a little bit. What is your estate? Something I want you to be familiar with. Look at my, the property whatever you own. So the property whatever you own is your estate. So I guess I'd have to say this. If you have an estate of whatever size, then you need estate planning. It might be very simple. It might be no more than just a will, but you need estate planning. It's pretty much for everyone. Um, and and I'll, I'll go down to where I was. What, what is your estate? It's a property of whatever you own. Now, our author talks about, and I put it on your handout, probate estate, gross estate, this sort of thing. There, there's different types of estates. Uh, or, or, it's a bad way to put that. Some estates include more than others. Your probate estate I want you to be familiar with that. It's owned real and personal property to be transferred at death. The wealth that you have that you want to transfer to someone else at death, that's your probate estate. Now, your gross estate may be larger than that. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have life insurance and you have a beneficiary. If you die, that life insurance is going to go to whoever that beneficiary was. That's really not going to be a part of your probate estate. It's not going to be probated uh, it, it, or liquidated is another way to put it because you already have made, uh, made arrangements for that uh, by, by uh, providing a beneficiary. Okay, not, not, but let's just be familiar with the fact that a probate estate is, is owned in real property to be transferred at your death and a, your estate is, whatever, is your property, whatever you own. Okay. And so we kind of know who needs it, which is we need to be familiar with. We know what an estate is, property you own, and we know what estate planning is. Now, something I, I did poorly on, uh, so let me, I want to talk a little bit about wills. I put up here at the top of the, the next page for me, thy will be done. And I started, I started your definition of a will, which I want you to be familiar with, but I, I cut it off at the top. A written and legally enforceable and it goes away so let me let me help us with what a will is 
maybe. A will. This is a be familiar with. A written and legally enforceable document expressing how a person's property should be distributed on his or her death. So you can see that probating or liquidating your estate, the estate's not yours anymore, you're gone. So you, it's got to be transferred to others. A will has, is a major document used in doing that. Let's do this again. A written and legally enforceable document expressing how a person's property should be distributed on his or her death. So I'd be familiar with what a will is. Now, if you're looking at my handout, uh, a person has a will and they're directing a disposition of their property. They're called a testator. Now, I'm not going to get crazy, I'm not going to get legal with you, but there's a few things I want you to be familiar with. And testator is one. If you have a will, then you can say to somebody you know, hey, hey, did you know I'm a testator? That should evoke an interesting conversation. All right, okay. So I want you to be familiar with. Now, if you don't have a will, then you are, and you die, you die in what they call intestacy. Intestacy. They sound alike, but they're different. A testator has a will. If you die without a will, you die in testacy. You die without a will. Do you realize that right now I'm going to die in testacy? Okay. That would invoke a conversation as well. I don't mean to be silly, but I do want you to be familiar with what it means to be a testator is and what in testacy means. Wills. Pretty important documents incredibly important documents because a will tells how uh, you're going to you, you're going to distribute your assets within within the law now i didn't i didn't put this in your handout i'm not going to make it testable to you but if you happen to have your book we have a person here that has put together a will and you say well should i just copy this to to make this a will for my own will not really uh, if I were you and you were going to do, and you haven't done a will, uh, I would go to an attorney and have that attorney help you with that will. Do you have to? No. Can you get on the internet and probably try to figure it out? Maybe, but wills are pretty important. You want to do them right because it's how you're going to distribute, how your assets are going to be distributed after your death. I'd make sure they're done correctly. But anyway, just to kind of look at one here, the last will and testament of Glenn Brannan. Introduction, section 1, Introductory Clause. I, Glenn Brandon, my certain, certain place, uh, do hereby make my last will and revoke all wills and codicils made prior to this will. We'll talk about what a codicil is in a minute. I'll, I'll mention it now. A codicil is a change you've made to a will. You can change your will without changing your whole will by, by doing a codicil, which is a written document. So what, uh, what old Glenn is saying here, this is my last one. This is it. And anything that I've had before, this supersedes it. Number two, directions of payment. I direct payment out of my estate of all just debts and the expenses of my last illness and funeral. Makes sense. Disposition of property. This is how I'm going to distribute my property. I give and bequeath to my wife, Karen Keyes Brannon, all my jewelry, automobiles, books, for photography, so, 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 so. Okay. Appointment clause. I hereby nominate as the executor of this will. You're not going to be able to carry out the, this will because you're gone. So you'll appoint an executor, someone who is going to take care of or carry out your will. It may be your attorney, not a bad idea. Maybe your accountant, someone like that. It could be a relative or a friend, you know, but someone who has some understanding would be helpful. Uh, I hereby nominate as the executor of my will my beloved wife Karen. If she's unable to do it, my brother Marshall. If uh, neither one of them are going to do it, uh, uh, I nominate as executor uh, the Midwestern Trust Bank of Chicago, Illinois. Tax clause. I direct that there should be paid out of my uh, estate um, 
all the state inheritance and similar taxes imposed by the government. Okay. Execute. Uh, I, in witnesses thereof, I have affixed my signature to this, my last will and testament, which consists of five paces, each of which I have initialed this 15th day of September 2017. And then a witness clause. Normally, the witness signatures and addresses would follow this clause. You'd have it notarized. Okay. Is it important to date it? Absolutely. Is it important to witness it or have it notarized? Yes. Because this is the last one. This is Glenn's absolute last will until what? He does another one. Or if he does a codicil, which is a little, uh, it, it's, a, it's a legal document amending some part of his will. Up here he said, I bequeath to my wife Karen all my automobiles. He may decide, you know, I sure would like for Joe Lane to have that Corvette of mine. So he does a codicil that says, uh, my 1976 Corvette Stingray, uh, I, I, uh, I give to a esteemed business professor, Professor Joseph Lane, Louisiana Delta Community College. Okay. And if you, yeah, no, okay, that's kind of how that goes. All right, so that's, that's kind of how to put a wheel together. And like I say, it's just an example. I, I certainly wouldn't, you know, use it as my, as my only example to put together a wheel, but you can see kind of, kind of some of the, some of the things in here. He starts off saying, this is my last one. He directs certain payments. He says how he wants his property to be distributed. He appoints an executor. He says, make sure you pay my taxes. And uh, I've signed it on this particular date and he has it witnessed and or notarized. That, that was free. That was, there's no no's or be familiar with, you're not gonna be putting together a will uh, on the, the final. However, something I want you to know is something next on your handout. Requirements of a valid will. What makes a will valid? Let's look at them. Mental capacity. You gotta have the mental capacity to make it. You gotta have the mental capacity to change it. Can mental capacity ever be challenged? Oh yeah, yeah, it can. Um, I think when Mr. Benson, the owner of the Saints, passed away, part of his distribution of his assets, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm not 100% on this, but I think I'm right, we went to his wife, and I think his children are fighting that, or did fight it in court. So, can you, after someone has died, and there's a distribution of the assets, if you felt like you were supposed to get something and you didn't, can you challenge the will? Sure. It doesn't mean you're gonna win, but you can challenge it. And one of the ways a lot of times they challenge it is on mental capacity. The person was not because of illness, because of age, because of something he was not mentally capable or she was not mentally capable. Requirements of valid will, mental capability, freedom of choice. If you force a person to change their will, then that's not a valid will. I, you know, you hold a gun to their head and say, do this will. That's not, that's not, makes, it's not a valid will. You've got to have freedom of choice when you make out your will. Number three, proper execution. It's got to be done right. That's why I'm saying a, a will is a pretty important thing. It does not cost a lot to have a will drawn up and drawn up properly in the state that you're living. I, I would encourage you to do it that way. It's just important. So anyway, three things I want, want you to know. Requirements of a valid will, mental capacity, freedom of choice, proper execution. All right, now, changing the will I didn't put it in here, so let me write it down so you can write it down. C-O-D-I-C-I-L. Codicil. A codicil is a way that you can make a change in a will without revoking that will. Oh, Glenn here. Glenn did not want to change his entire will. He just wanted to give me the Corvette. So in doing so, he just did a codicil in addition to this will. Probably in here somewhere, pretty close. A codicil, a document that legally modifies a will without revoking it. How many codicils can you have? Uh, several. 
and you won't. Now, it could get to the point where you have so many codicils, it's, it's kind of, it's making it hard to understand. You might want to go back and redo the will entirely. Okay. Safeguarding the will. I would do multiple originals of the will. I'd do multiple originals. Uh, trusted friend, keep one. Keep one in a safe deposit box. Keep one with your accountant and or your attorney. Maybe the person that helped you draw up the will, keep the will, a copy of the will with them. You know, so make sure you have copies of the will. Now, if you completely change a will, it would be a good idea that that new, new will, that you make sure that, that all those old copies are out there that are, 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 uh, are done away with. I mean, you don't have to, because if, if I'm holding a will that you gave me two years ago, and you've done a new will, your new will is still going to supersede the old will, even if I have it in my hand, because the date's going to be later. You know? but, but, you know, it's not a bad idea. If you, put, if you put a will in four or five different places, if you do a new will, I'd put those in the same four or five different places. So I'd safeguard the will. Uh, the, we talked about this a little bit, but the administrator of an estate. What we're doing... When we talk about estate planning, what we're doing is we're, we're providing how our estate is going to be liquidated. It's not ours anymore. It's going to be liquidated, and we want it to liquidate it in the way that we want it liquidated. Our, our wishes within law. Administration of an estate. When people die, they usually own property, owe debts, and uh, people may owe them. So there is a probate process. Remember, remember, you talked about your probate estate, the things that you're going to transfer at your death. Well, there's a, there's a process to liquidate your probate, uh, probate estate. There's a probate process of liquidation. All right. A, a court-supervised process, so just be familiar with, be familiar with, with changing the will, the codicil. Be familiar with the fact that you need to safeguard the will. Have the will in safe places. Be familiar with the probate process is the liquidation of your estate. And it is the court supervised process of liquidation that occurs when a person dies. So if you're looking at my handout, just be familiar with liquidation probate process and what that is. The court supervised process of liquidation that occurs when a person dies. Okay, who's going to be in charge of that? You are a testator. Remember what that means? It means you have a will. Well, in your will, what did you appoint? Remember that? You appointed an executor. So the executor is going to be the person in charge of probating your estate in accordance with your wishes. What if you, what if you died in testacy without a will? Then the, the courts are going to appoint an administrator. I'd like for you to be familiar with that if you die with a will, an executor is going to probate your estate under law, court supervised. If you died without a will, it's going to be a court-appointed administrator. All right. There's one other thing I threw in here. Again, I know your notes are just in sequence on your, on your computer, and of course mine I've stapled together, but down right below administrator of an estate, I put something in here about power of attorney. I want, to, I want us to be kind of familiar. I don't guess you could be kind of. I want you to be familiar with power of attorney. Now, I, I wrote power of attorney down here. Let me see if I can get on this, this stool and ride it here for a few minutes. Um, but I want, to, I want you to be familiar with what power of attorney is. A legal document that authorizes another person to take over someone's financial affairs and act on his or her behalf. Now this is done during your lifetime, but this is closely related to all of these things that we're talking about. So what I wanted to do here is, is he talks about other important estate planning documents. Sometimes you give a person a power of attorney. If you give them truly a power of attorney, it's a legal document, you're turning over to somebody else 
the ability to do something for you. You can give them a power of attorney as it relates to, to, your, to your assets, to your, your investments, to things like that. You can do a power of attorney as it relates to health care. Okay. I want you to be familiar with what power of attorney is. One more time. Uh, legal document that authorizes another person to take over someone's financial affairs and act on his or her behalf. That would be a power of attorney for financial matters. Found out also that, that uh, you need to, if you do a power of attorney for financial matters, you need to specifically mention that that person also has power of attorney for your investments. Okay. But anyway, that's just, a, that's just an extra. Just want you to basically be familiar with what a power of attorney is. Why would you give somebody a power of attorney? Your age, you just simply, uh, you, you have a, you, uh, you're beginning to get dementia or something like this. Your thinking is not quite as clear as it used to be. And so why you, you know, uh, my, my, my father-in-law, uh, who, was, who was still sharp, but, but had gotten, you know, gotten older and had a stroke, was in a nursing home, very hard for him to handle his financial affairs. He gave power attorney to, to my wife. Uh, so anyway, so just be familiar with what power of attorney is. All right, let's see what else we have to do. Uh, he talks about joint ownership. I really don't want to talk much about joint ownership. Actually, I don't want to talk any about joint ownership, but I do want to talk about community property. We are a community property state. All right. I did not put it on your handout. I'll write it here on the board if I'm not too lazy to get up. But, but I, want, I want to talk for a minute about community property. Get ready to write. All marital property co-owned equally by both spouses while living in a community property state. That would be Louisiana. We are a community property state. We've got the codicil down. Community property. I'm leaving, I'm leaving you for a second. I'll maybe my hand to stay in here with you. Uh, all material property, that's like your assets and stuff, co-owned equally by both spouses while living in a community property state. So if you are married, you and your spouse, the things that you accumulate during your marriage, the time that you're building wealth, that's co-owned by both. If I, I mentioned to you, I, I've erased it, I mentioned to you that I get a pension from the Louisiana Teacher Retirement Center. I'm eligible for a pension from the Louisiana Teacher Retirement System. Uh, I get mad at my wife, heaven forbid, and uh, I, I say, well, I'm just not gonna let her have any of my pension. I'm gonna write that out, out of my will. No pension stuff for my wife. Can't do that. That pension, my pension was accumulated over the time we were married. She has a legal right to that. That's community property. So just be familiar with that. Is there a little more to it than that? Well, sure. But just, I just wanted you to have the idea of community. Now, you know, can you do a prenuptial agreement? Uh, and this is not testable. Prenuptial agreement before you get, you get married that that's very much stipulates uh, what a person does or does not have a part of during the marriage, you can do that. That's a legal document as well. But outside of some type of, some type of a prenup, uh, be sure you be, just be familiar with what community property is. Okay, I think probably the last thing that I want to mention in here are trust. Sometimes, I love the definition of trust because it sounds like, oh my gosh, a trust. A legal relationship created when one party transfers property to a second party for the benefit of a third party. The second party is the trustee, the third party is the beneficiary. Now does that make perfectly good sense? I didn't think so. Let me give you an example. There's, there's all kinds of trust that you can do. Uh, 
Uh, but just let me give you let me give you an example. You have uh, you have a uh, a son that twelve years old, and you want to set up a trust for that son. The son is going to be, the, this is your son, the son's going to be a beneficiary at the age of 21. You set that trust up with Tom at the such and such and such and such a bank. So whatever you want son to have, whatever you're giving son at the age of 21, it's put in a trust at the bank that he'll get at age 21. Not until that time. Now, there's all kinds of trust. Uh, there are revocable trust. There are irrevocable trust. J just let me let me just go go nuts for a minute. Uh, there are living trust. Uh, that you do, uh, that you that you create during your lifetime. There are also trusts that you can set up as a set up as a part of your estate planning. Uh, you can set up a, a trust during your lifetime that's irrevocable. Here, here's the deal. You know, why would you do a trust? Well, there's a number of reasons. To protect somebody. Let, let's say that you have a you have a, a relative that that has diminished mental capacity. And are really not going to be able to handle them themselves or handle what you want to provide for them. You could set up a trust for them that would be administered for them through their lifetime. You could do that. Uh, this trust that you're setting aside for your son or something. Now here, here's the deal. If this is an irrevocable trust, this trust passes to uh, the trustee. Uh, this is no longer your asset. This belongs to your son just being held for him. So does that have some tax ramifications? Yes. There's, there's a whole lot of stuff. There's a whole lot of stuff in trust. The only thing that I, and you're saying, oh, wait, well, what, what, what do you want us to be familiar with? All I want you to be familiar with is a trust is a legal relationship created when one party, that's me, transfers a property, that Corvette that I got, to another property, that's Tom down at the bank, for the benefit of a third property, that's my grandson Jonathan when he gets to be 16. That's what a trust would be. And when you set up living trust, revocable trust, irrevocable trust, different trusts have different tax implications depending on, uh, mainly on whether uh, title passes or not. All right, All right. I don't want to go crazy. Um, I think we talked about the main, uh, Estate planning, important? Yes. Um, what's the, probably the largest single thing as it relates to estate planning? A will. Because your will can pretty much talk about how you want your estate distributed within law. Uh, you know the requirements that, that you have to have for a, law to, for a will to be valid. And just as a side note, I'll again say I, I would have someone, I'd have an attorney Help me with my, my will, at least for, you know, uh, so that you know that it is valid in the state where you live. Um, but estate planning is very important because even though you, you can't take it with you, you're not going to need it. Uh, hopefully you're going to be in a much better place. Uh, those that you leave behind, you can, you can uh, have those go to those folks uh, by liquidating your state according to your wishes. All right, that's chapter 15. That is the last chapter, 13, 14, and 15. Uh, on the, a lot of the final will come out of those chapters. I've already mentioned to you the knows and to be familiar with. Now, chapters 1 through 12 are also some things out of those are going to be on the final. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here in a moment. I'm going to put my chair right here in the, the middle of the, uh, the camera. And I'm going to come back in a few minutes. I'm going to do a finals review for you. Chapters 1 through 12, the things that you either know or need to be familiar with in those, in those chapters. I've enjoyed personal financial planning with you. Uh, I'll probably say that again on the review video in a few minutes. 
But uh, I've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've picked up some things. You know, like we talked about property insurance, having comprehensive insurance, having replacement costs instead of actual cash value. Uh, I'd love for you to be a personal financial planner. Hey, if I get into personal financial planning, what's, for, what's in it for me? You're going to be wealthier. You're going to handle your finances better. Not a bad deal. Okay, I've enjoyed it. Uh, I've enjoyed the video part of it. I've enjoyed the face-to-face -face part of it. Uh, I'm going to, you know, my executive producer, uh, he needs to know when I have finished a chapter, so I'm getting ready to clap my hands. And that finishes chapter, uh, chapter 15. We are done. See you at the review.